Today we travel under the Thames by train without a second thought. Tunnels under the river are commonplace. In fact, there are 23 of them in London, containing everything from cables to tube trains. But can you imagine how exciting it must have been to witness the construction and the opening of the very first tunnel under a river, anywhere in the world? Until the space race of the 1960s, no other engineering feat in history attracted so much attention as Mark Brunel's original Thames Tunnel. It was truly the eighth wonder of the world. The Thames Tunnel Company were not slow to capitalise on the public's interest. In February 1827, visitors were allowed to come into the tunnel and see the miners at work for the cost of a shilling about five pounds in today's money. As many as 800 visitors would arrive on a single day and the tunnel works quickly became one of the must-see attractions of the city. Among them were tourists, men of letters, scientists and even a young princess, the future Queen Victoria, at that time such a little-known royal that Mark didn't even notice her. In November 1827, the tunnel had reached halfway across the river and Isambard Kingdom Brunel organised a celebration in the tunnel itself. With the western archway draped in crimson, 50 guests sat down to a banquet, accompanied by the band of the Coldstream Guards. It must have been deafening. This picture by George Jones, who was one of the guests, captures the moment or almost. In the bottom left, Mark chats with Isambard. This is the only picture of the two men together. But Mark had suffered a stroke and was not actually at the banquet. Nine months later, floods and money problems led to work being halted and the end of the tunnel bricked up. A huge mirror was installed at the end to create the illusion of, or a vision of, the completed tunnel, helping it to remain a tourist attraction. Public interest remained until the work started up again, despite the Times calling the Thames Tunnel the Great Bore. A range of souvenirs was even produced, similar to this model by Mark himself of the shield and arches. And then, finally, the tunnel opened. Early in the morning of 25th of March, 1843, crowds began to assemble at Rotherhithe. They waited until four in the afternoon before their patience finally gave way and they started to swarm down the stairway. 50,000 came on that first day and after just over 15 weeks, a million people had visited, half the population of London at the time. Not long afterwards, Victoria, now Queen, made her second visit. The opening was also a huge commercial opportunity. All manner of souvenirs were for sale, such as this silk kerchief we have in the collection. We believe it is only one of two that have survived since the opening. The high level of detail tells us plenty about the tunnel's design and its visitors. You can even tell the whopping and rather hive shafts apart. These items were profitable for the sellers, but the tunnel itself made no profit without horse-drawn traffic. The tunnel was never a commercial success, but no one could deny it was an engineering triumph, truly the eighth wonder of the world. But unlike the other wonders of the world, it was not a novelty. It pioneered a method of tunnelling that is still used to this day. From the machines building Crossrail to those that built most of the London Underground system, the Channel Tunnel and the Thames Tideway Tunnel, all are automated developments of Sir Mark Brunel's prototype. Few historic civil engineering innovations 
have had such a direct influence on today's techniques.